Hey, my name is Andreas. I want to give a quick um, talk about Make Neutron Great Again. Uh, myself, um, I'm Andreas Röder, a German guy working for Nuage. Uh, we are originally spin-off from Alcatel Lucent, now fully owned by Nokia. The idea of the talk is basically go to Neutron and concepts what you have today and what actually from our perspective are slightly missing. We're working with the community, but on the other side, in order to bridge the gaps in the meantime, um, there's also a product around. Um, which we basically put to the market and then exactly addressing those kind of needs. Um, if you look at the current stack of OpenStack networking, um, it's quite interesting because there's a lot of issues you see right over there. You need a lot of interfaces, you need a lot of tabs, you need to go from one interface to the other interface, um, and you basically go in and in order to have all those kind of functions, you need to have it also provisioning from different endpoints. So you go in, there are certain aspects which are handled by Neutron themselves. There are certain um, assets which are handled by the Neutron L2 agent, but there are also other assets which are handled by Nova. And it depends, and as a, we as a community also see, hey, we need to address those kind of issues. You see more and more projects popping up and you say, hey, let's try to solve it via OVN, let's try to solve it in different aspects. But for us, in the meantime, we try to address those kind of issues and said, well, let's go there and come up with an alternative architecture and come up with an alternative solution to exactly address those kind of problems. This is just based on the KVM. Um, we can do exactly the same exercise also if you would put something under, different underneath. The problem, what we also see in the majority of the time, um, OBS from a pure data pass perspective support layer two only which has a lot of problems in the long run if you really want to scale and if you want to put it up to the next level. So our approach is basically, let's try to simplify it first before we go for full automation. Let's try to have a one concrete um, OBS controlled um, bridge and do everything inside there fully distributed rather than breaking out and going to other nodes like the networking node and having a full-blown function sitting right over there. So our idea is basically go in there, have one bridge which then also supports the entire layer 2, layer 3, doing all the floating IPs and all this kind of stuff what you really need. Um, if, you, if you then take it from a different perspective, um, certain elements require a certain data pass, right? So a lot of people talk about micro-segmentation and how you really want to separate workloads from each other, how you want to have them not talking to each other because you don't really have to, that much control. If you look at that, yes, it works, but troubleshooting that one, if you have a problem, and also finding out where actually your flow is actually passing by throughout the system and giving out statistic, for the people who have done it, it's a brutal nightmare. Um, from an operational perspective, it's really hard to nail it down where your actual problem is because you need a lot of namespaces, you need a lot of tapping interfaces, you need to go down from point A to point B, and just to finding out the root causes, it's really complicated. So the idea is basically, <coughs> we still want to use OBS as an underlying technology. There is no real point in that point of time to reinventing the wheel. OBS does a pretty good job, but OBS as it is natively and upstream, you might need to do a little bit of tricks because if you wanted to turn it into a full-blown router, you want to give it a little bit also of state control, so you need to put a control plane on top of that. Otherwise, you might facing problems. Um, so what we basically do is here is another example. Let's assume you take the default networking configuration. So you have a couple of computes, um, you have a couple of networks, and you only have two things which you basically want to address. You have two VMs in one tenant, and they just need to go out. I just want to have them talking to the rest of the world in the internet. If you look at the, the amount of interfaces Neutron needs to um, maintain, you need to provision, and the amount of bridges, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty problematic because they are basically, don't really have a shared state in that regards that it provisioned either from Nova or they directly from Neutron and they need to meet each other at, in the middle. So our approach is slightly different. We basically say, <laughs> take out all of those kind of complexity, go in and just do everything natively in one single bridge, but then it's totally controlled. And if you need to break out, use what you have. Either you have existing switching gear, which can easily provide you a VTAP interface, or if that's not existing right over there, just provide a software gateway, which can do it, or which requires certain planning, 
dump it straight to the underlay. Why not break out on every compute itself and route it straight to the underlay? Um, if that's not possible, you can still pat it, you can still not it, but you want to have the flexibility that you can build all those networking paradigms. That's what you also see, and that goes more even deeper into technology, that um, we as a networking company, and we build a lot of networks worldwide, um, you see there is certain shortcomings inside Neutron, which you need to address. Um, a lot like that, there are multiple projects which tries to address those kind of needs. Um, I think the most popular one where everybody knows is OBN, which goes exactly more or less in that direction and says we need to address those kind of issues. Nevertheless, there are still certain aspects which you need to be aware of that, um, that you have a fundamental issue sooner or later with the message bus as soon as you have a lot of chatty let's say provisioning and the chatty network, which basically means if you have a relatively flat configuration, so you assign your VMs, they are there, they just get a certain amount of security groups, relatively static IP handling, then it's fine. You don't really face any kind of issues. The problem really starts if there's a lot of change in the network, if there's a lot of churn, because every, chur every change basically means you need to put something on the, on the bus, and sooner or later, the bus get congestion, because everything also means you have SQL lookups, you need to change, you need to put it um, on every compute, and you need to go back and forward between the networking node and the compute node, um, which has <coughs> a big problem by itself because you end up in a lot of read-write operations either on the message and queue or on the overall SQL. Nevertheless, what's also a big problem from our perspective is there is no real control plane. So your control plane is basically look up in the database, see the change, take the change and put it out to the compute um, or then to the networking node. And we, we can talk about the rest um, from database perspective. Um, it's, it's pretty uh, um, bad if you look at how routed designs normally work. Doing it with a SQL backend slows down your performance dramatically if you have a lot of churn in the network. Like that, if you have everything pretty static and there is no real change, keep going. I mean, there is no need. But as soon as you want to have um, a really diverged network, then it's getting complicated. And also, if you look, there is more and more packaging, and people say, hey, I want to have Kubernetes and running OpenStack on top as an application, or I want to have OpenStack and then hosting Kubernetes on top. So there's a lot of dynamics, and might even um, OpenStack get sandwiched between those two layers. Um, if you have that into consideration, you have a really dynamic network, and there is a lot of stuff going on from a networking perspective um, as soon as you reach that kind of point. Um, what's also there, and this is a really brief um, comparison, what do you have as of today in native OpenStack and what you should have from a networking perspective and the kind of features, what do you really need? I mean, we, are, we got pretty far with distributed switching, routing, um, but as soon as it comes to netting, and where do you do the NAT, where you actually translate all your IPs from one state to the other state, there's a slightly difference. Um, because um, in the normal OpenStack world, it's pretty centralized from a source net perspective. Um, also, if you want to have bare metal support multi-tenancy, there is something good stuff popping up in Newton, but um, there needs to be way more um, flexibility in your network design. And what we basically say is, let's take that baseline, but extend it. Put something on top which gives you all the networking flexibility which you really need by the end of the day. Because in most of the worlds, OpenStack itself is not self-contained. So you need to break out. You have multi-site deployments. You need to go from one data center towards another data center. You maybe want to cluster everything together. So as soon as you have that kind of need, there's a big interest also to say, hey, I want to put it also with my data center gateways. I want to talk from point A to point B. Why not provision them directly out of the box? Um, and what you also get is a lot of um, routing optimization. You have a lot of um, resource where you say, hey, yes, I want to have those kind of tenants totally isolated, but nevertheless, there is still a need that they can talk to each other. I might have shared tenants where there is certain infrastructure needs which I need to leak to every other tenant, but I still want to have a protection. I want to have a really granular route control, what I want to do. Um, you want to have, it depends again, a little bit on your application. You want to see a little bit of, do I need multicast? And if I have multicast, how I can optimize that further? Do I just pump all the multicast traffic into the overlay or do I just go forward? Um, 
So what we basically provide is a single architecture. I don't want to go in too much detail, but it basically gives you the option to do it for OpenStack. But the beauty of the platform is you can also do it for any other workload you have in the data center. So you get a form factor for ESXi, you get it for Hyper-V, um, you can do it with native Docker, you can do it straight into Kubernetes, and it gives you the option also to integrate bare metals or just dump it and see and stretch all the networking between multiple OpenStack clusters. Um, if you want to try it out, there's a Nuage X, which basically gives you a full setup controller, a full setup policy plane directly in the cloud. The only thing what you really need, bring your own compute. So set up something which works as your own compute. You can directly try it out. Um, the page to try it out is um, nuagex.io, um, where you get all the documentation. All the code um, and everything we do is also on GitHub, github.io um, slash networks. Um, if you have any kind of questions regarding this kind of technology and what we really do in detail, because this was intended to just give a brief overview what this is all about and what is the problem statement we try to address, um, drop by at our booth um, and then we are happy to discuss any kind of use cases and how you can move forward. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your interest.